So friends, let's see today's lovely recipe of custard tarts. Now I'm just going to dust my surface with uh, flour and I'm going to roll out this puff pastry. Now I'm using a ready-made puff pastry but I will leave a link of how to prepare this. Now I'm going to grease a muffin tin with some butter. I'm going to take any round uh, you know, object like a vati or if you have a kind of a mold and just cut them up into six rounds. Then I'm going to place them into my muffin holder. Just ensure that the pastry is in line with the muffin holder. It shouldn't be too much outside or too, you know, uh, halfway. It shouldn't be halfway through the muffin. It should be exactly touching the tip of the muffin holder. And just dab down the bottom or the base of the, uh, the pastry. And we're going to set this aside. Now we're going to prepare the filling, which is a custard filling. Now for that, I've used one and one fourth cup of milk, two eggs, three fourth cup of powdered sugar. That is sugar just run in my mixer and made into a powder. One teaspoon of cinnamon powder, half a teaspoon of vanilla essence and two tablespoons of corn flour. Now I'm going to take a dawn stick pan. I'm going to add the eggs and I'm going to beat the eggs really well. So you can directly put all your ingredients into the pan in which you're going to cook the custard. You don't need to put it into a separate bowl and then add it over here. Then I'm going to add the vanilla essence. I'm going to add the cinnamon powder. And I'm going to whisk all of this very, very well. Next, I'm going to add the powdered sugar. So you can use icing sugar for this or you can just take regular sugar and blend it in your mixer and add it. Now let all of the sugar nicely dissolve. There should not be any lumps of sugar. Ensure that one for that you can use a whisk. Next I'm going to be adding in the milk. And again, mix everything really well together. Now last and not, but not the least, I'm going to add the th corn flour, which is the thickening agent. And I'm going to mix everything so that the mixture is lump free. We don't want any lumps in this mixture. Now I'm going to place the mixture on the gas top on a very low to medium flame and continuously whisk it till the mixture thickens but it shouldn't be so thick that I cannot pour it. So it should be thick enough but of a pourable consistency. So the minute the mixture starts coating in the back of your spoon, you know, then means your mixture is ready. It shouldn't be too runny or it shouldn't be too thick. It should be like a porridge consistency which can be poured. Because now we're going to run this mixture through the sieve, through a sieve or a strainer. And then, so you can see all of the, whatever was, you know, the cinnamon which was not ground properly or whatever remains back. And then I'm just going to pour this mixture into these uh, puff pastries. At this time, I would preheat my oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes. Always preheat your oven. And then I'm going to bake this at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. It all depends on your oven. So keep checking them. Once they become golden brown like this, once they're out of the oven, let them rest till they're completely cooled down before you demold them. And your lovely custard tarts are all ready. You can enjoy this with a lovely cup of tea or coffee. So friends, let's see how to make these delicious chocolate eclairs filled with some lovely cream filling. Now I've taken 50 grams of butter in my pan and melted the butter. First we're going to make this shoe pastry. 
Now, once the butter melts, we're going to add half a cup of water. Mix the two well and let this cook for about half a minute. Then I've got 50 grams of plain flour or maida. I'm going to add that and we're going to vigorously stir with our spatula till the mixture turns into a sticky ball of dough and starts leaving the side of the pan. And this happens really quickly. Now you can preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. And you can see how this mixture comes together. Just keep stirring it with a spatula and once this happens that it all comes together just turn off the heat. Now I'm going to add two eggs while the mixture is still warm. Now remember the gas top is off or the heat is off but we are going to stir in these beaten eggs again till the mixture starts to leave the sides of the pan. So with the residue heat from the pan as well as from the dough, the eggs cook quite quickly. So just keep stirring. Remember there is no heat on. It is just the heat of the pan, that the residue heat of the pan. So just keep stirring and now the dough is ready. This is the consistency. I'm just going to put it into a piping bag and now we're going to pipe these four inches long and one and a half inch thick cylindrical shapes and keep some space between each of them. And then just dip your finger into some cold water and just shape them to form a nice small eclair shape. So cold water, just dab them down and they should look like this. Now remember to preheat your oven. And now we're going to bake these at 180 degrees Celsius for about 45 minutes. Now after 30 minutes, just keep opening and closing the dough of the oven every 8 minutes. So just take a, a, you know, your oven mitt and just keep opening the dough. And after 45 minutes, let them cool completely. And they are ready. I'll just cut open some and show you. So they become very light and amazing. And when you cut them with a very sharp serrated knife, you will see how porous they are on the inside. This is what we are looking for. This is the texture. So they should be a melt in the mouth. Now I have cut all of them in this shape and kept the bottom and the top together. Now I am going to take one cup of fresh cream and two third cup of icing sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla essence. This is going to be our cream filling for the eclair. So whisk this till it's nice and thick. Now I am adding mascarpone cheese which is homemade but this is completely optional. I will leave a link of how I made this mascarpone cheese at home. It's very simple. You can add this cheese or you can just leave it out and only use the cream filling. This cheese just adds a little bit of thickness and texture and taste to this eclair. It's very easy to prepare so I will leave a link of how I prepared these ma this mascarpone cheese at home. And now blend everything together and you can see you get this lovely creamy thick filling. Now I'm just going to melt 50 grams of milk chocolate and 25 grams of dark chocolate. Now you can go either with complete dark chocolate or milk chocolate. Now I'm just going to take the top of the eclair and just dip it into this melted chocolate. See that it's coated really well. 
and drip off the excess. And just set this aside till the chocolate nicely sets on top of each of the top part of them. Now one tip is always keep the top and bottom together so that you get the perfect size. Otherwise if you just keep them anyhow then you know you will get the bottom a different size and it might not uh, really uh, you know come together. So remember to keep the bottoms and the tops together. And I'm going to refrigerate the, this for about 10 minutes so that it sits. Now I'm just going to fill the cream to the lower base of the eclair. You can also use a piping bag and pipe the filling like this. And then all you have to do is just put the top chocolate which are set now on top of it and your lovely eclairs are all ready. So let's see today's lovely recipe of roasted hazelnut gooey fudge. It's super easy to make. Here I have 200 grams of milk chocolate compound that I'm using a double boiler to just melt it. You can also melt this in your microwave. Now here I've taken about 50 grams of hazelnut and I'm just going to roast them on a medium flame for about 2 minutes. Now I ordered these uh, you know, online, they're easily available. Uh, or you can even try them in, you know, stores where you get dry fruits or the other places are Crawford Market. Uh, they're easily available uh, nowadays. And once, uh, you know, they're nice and roasted, they're just going to turn off the flame. And with the residue heat, just let them get nice and toasted and they look like this. And then I'm going to transfer them to a bowl to cool them up. Now, once they're nice and cool, I'm just going to use a Ziploc bag and I'm going to add these... Uh, nuts into the bag and seal it up or if you have any plastic bag just you know see that they ensure that the top is you know closed and then you're just going to take a rolling pin and beat it gently till you get a coarse kind of powder we don't want a very fine powder and you can also leave some of the hazelnuts whole so just pound them like this with a rolling pin and then we're just going to transfer them to a bowl and set them aside. So you can see some of them are whole and some of them have been crushed. That's the consistency we're looking for. Now for this recipe, we are also going to be needing 100 grams of condensed milk. You can use the store-bought one, but I'm going to show you a very easy no-cook recipe of homemade uh, condensed milk. It's super, super simple, so keep watching. Now here I have one cup of milk powder. I'm going to add it to a bowl. To that, I'm going to add six tablespoons of powdered sugar. So I've just taken sugar and ground it to a fine powder in my mixer jar. And then just take six tablespoons of the powdered sugar add it to the milk powder now you're going to whisk the two together really well that is the milk powder and the powdered sugar till it mixes in really really well so i use this condensed milk for all my recipes i leave a link of all the recipes that i use this in like lemon uh, pie and many other recipes ice cream also now here i have four tablespoons of butter at room temperature So get in all that butter. So just four ingredients and you have your condensed milk ready in no time. So there's no cooking involved or anything. And then I'm just going to add a quarter cup of one fourth cup of hot water. So I've just microwaved the water or you can just boil it on your stove top. So it should be nice and piping hot and just add a little at a time and mix all the three ingredients really well together. Now it does help if you use a whisk because then you get a very smooth and lump-free mixture. 
So I always make a batch of this condensed milk and store it in my refrigerator. And whenever I need to make ice cream or any other kind of dessert, I just use it. And I, got, I measured it on my measuring uh, scale. You get exactly 275 grams of the mixture. So you can see how fast the, you know, it's become into this lovely, smooth, condensed milk consistency. And when you taste it, it tastes just like condensed milk. So you can see the consistency. It's so smooth. So that's it, guys. Your condensed milk is all ready to use for any of your recipes. Now here I've just greased a tray with some butter using a silicone brush so that you evenly uh, grease it all over. Now our milk chocolate compound has become nice and smooth like this. We want this consistency. And now we're just going to add this condensed milk to it and stir it really well. Mix in the condensed milk really well with the melted chocolate. Now I would recommend that you use milk chocolate compound and not dark chocolate compound because then the entire taste will change. Now uh, you will see that the uh, mixture will instantly start to thicken once you add the condensed milk to the uh, melted chocolate compound. And now I'm going to add two heaped tablespoons of Nutella or you can use any hazelnut spread that you get in any brand. And then mix everything really well. Now this Nutella is a whole hazelnut base uh, spread and this just enhances the taste of this fudge. So try not to skip it out. And then we're going to add up or add our lovely uh, coarsely ground roasted hazelnuts. And it has to be a real generous amount because then you know every bite of it will have a lovely crunch of the hazelnut. So mix everything really well in together. And now we're just going to transfer our mixture to our greased cake tin. And just evenly spread it out so that it covers the entire cake tin. I've mentioned the dimensions of the cake tin. It's about one inch in thickness and it's a seven by seven uh, cake tin. You can also use the silicone ones, whatever you have at home. And now we're just going to cover it with some cling wrap. And we're going to refrigerate this for at least two hours. And after two hours, our fudge is all ready. You can see that it's nicely set. And now all you have to do is just cut it up into even size squares. And then using any kind of a flat uh, you know, object like this, you can just, or a spatula, just take out one piece. And once you take out one piece, then it's very easy to remove all the rest. And your lovely gooey fudge is all ready. Roasted hazelnut gooey fudge. Now, I generally like to store this in a glass container or a steel container in my refrigerator and it lasts for a really long time. The shelf life is really long. Of course, it's so delicious that it doesn't really last for more than a week. But, uh, you know, uh, concerning this shelf life, it lasts for at least a month or more in uh, the refrigerator in a nice, uh, you know, airtight steel container or glass container. So, give this recipe a try. And let me know how you like it. The walnut brownie recipe, which is super easy. So to a double boiler, I'm going to be adding one and a half cup of dark chocolate compound that I've just chopped up into smaller pieces because that way it melts easier. And to this, I'm going to be adding three fourth cup of butter. It's helpful if the butter is at room temperature. So just mix these two ingredients together till they become into a really smooth paste and they melt like this. We shouldn't have any lumps in this. So it should be a very smooth kind of a batter. And now we're going to take it off the uh, double boiler. To it, I'm going to be adding 3 fourth of a cup of powdered sugar. So all I've done is just taken 3 fourth of a cup of sugar, powdered it in my mixer jar and added that. Now mix this in well. Next, I'm going to be taking three eggs, but we're going to beat the eggs up well before adding. That makes it easier and, you know, it gets mixed up with the rest of the ingredients really well. 
So give it a good whisk and then just pour it into the with the rest of the ingredients and give it a thorough mix. Now we're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of vanilla essence. You could also add extract if you have it at hand. Now mix all of this really nicely together. And now we're going to add three fourths of a cup of flour, which is plain flour or all purpose flour. And again, give all of this a good mix. Now we just have one more ingredient and we are all set to go. So this would be a good time to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. And now I'm going to add half a cup of chopped walnuts. You can go with more or less. And now I'm just going to pour this batter into a lined cake tin. It's such a smooth, silky batter. I can't wait for the brownie to get ready. And now we're going to bake this in this preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. But keep an eye because every oven is different. And here our brownie is all ready. My entire kitchen has this beautiful aroma of brownies. And I can't wait to dig in. So I'm just going to wait for it to come to room temperature. And then I'm just going to demold it. Take off all the baking paper. And then I can't wait to just cut it up into nice large size cubes. And it's so soft and gooey. Because we added less cake flour or less plain flour, it becomes gooey. Otherwise, it comes into a cake consistency. So it needs to be soft and gooey. And that's it, guys. Your lovely chocolate walnut brownie is all ready to dig in. So friends, let's see today's delicious vanilla and chocolate loaf cake. Here are the few ingredients that we require for this recipe. Stuff that we generally have at home. So here are three eggs, preferably at room temperature. Three tablespoons of milk, again, preferably at room temperature. One fourth cup of butter, which has to be at room temperature. A teaspoon of baking powder. One teaspoon of vanilla essence, or you can even use the extract. Four tablespoons of cocoa powder, the unsweetened cocoa powder. This is half a cup of powdered sugar. You can also use icing sugar. And this is one and one fourth cup of all-purpose flour or maida. I've just lined my loaf tin with some baking paper. And I've also preheated my oven to 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. Now we're going to start by sifting our flour and baking powder together. And then you'll get this lovely mixture. Now to a large mixing bowl, I'm going to add the three eggs and I'm just going to whisk the eggs for about half a minute till they get nicely mixed together. Next, I'm going to add the vanilla essence and again whisk for about half a minute. Whisking the cake will make it really nice and light. We're going to add the milk and again continue whisking for about half a minute more. So like I said, whisking the mixture will make the cake very light and airy. Now we're going to start adding the powdered sugar a little at a time and continue whisking. So whisk the mixture well. And don't forget to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Now, once all our sugar is mixed in well, we're going to start adding the butter a little at a time. Now, for this, we need butter at room temperature because then the butter is nice and soft and it gets incorporated into the mixture really well. So again, keep adding the butter a little at a time. This cake is really, really moist and light and delicious and looks lovely too. Now, after adding all of the butter, you will see that the mixture, the color of the mixture turns to a paler yellow. And at this point, after that, we're going to add all the flour a little at a time and we're going to whisk it very lightly. This time with a uh, hand a mix, 
or a hand whisk rather, rather than the electric one. Now, if your batter looks a little bit curdled, that's normal. Don't worry about it. Now, just keep whisking it till it becomes very nice and smooth like this. So, now our cake batter is ready. We're going to divide. And now, we're going to divide the batter into three equal parts. Because we want the three distinct layers to this cake. Now into one of them, I'm going to sift the cocoa powder. Now it's very important that you sift the cocoa powder, otherwise it will be a little bit lumpy. And then once you do that, just whisk this really well till you get this rich and dark chocolate color in one of the batters. Now we're going to leave one batter plain and now we're going to add about two tablespoons to one of the plain batters. And we're going to mix it and you will see that you get this lighter brown or lighter chocolate color. So once I start whisking it, you'll see that the color is a little lighter than the darker chocolate color. So in this way, we'll have three distinct colors, three distinct batters. Mix it really well. See that it gets really nicely, you know, everything, uh, there's no white part of the batter in the other two. And one will be plain. And now we're just going to start layering. So I'm going to start with the darkest color, that is the darkest chocolate color for the lowest layer. So get all of that batter in there. And then just evenly spread it out in your cake tin. Now you can use a lo loaf tin, you can use uh, you know a normal uh, whatever cake tin you have at home also. But the loaf tin will give you you know perfect slices with the three distinct colors. See that it's spread out evenly. And once you spread it out, just gently tap it so that it goes to all the corners of the loaf tin and also the air bubbles get out of the mixture. Next, I'm going to add the lighter colored chocolate batter. Repeat it with the same way that is spread it out evenly and then just tap it. And be very gentle with your spatula. We don't want to mix the two batters together. We want to get those three distinct layers. So again, tap it gently. And last but not the least, we're going to add a plain vanilla batter, which doesn't have any cocoa powder in it. Now, besides the cake looking really pretty with the three distinct layers, you also get three distinct flavors because one is completely plain vanilla, whereas the other two have got chocolate, but one has got a real darker, a richer chocolate flavor and one has got a very lighter uh, chocolate flavor. So, uh, you know, when you bite into it, you'll get a beautiful taste of all three different flavors. And again, now tap it gently. And now we're just going to bake this in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes or till, you know, you uh, pierce a, a fork into it and it comes, I mean, a knife into it and it comes out nice and clean. And there our cake is all ready. We're going to completely let it cool to room temperature. And then all we have to do is just demold it, take off all the butter paper and just slice them. This is a lovely tea cake or a cake to have at any time. You're hungry and you crave for a nice light vanilla and chocolate cake. So I hope you give this recipe a try and let me know in the comment section how you like it. And I'll catch you soon in my next recipe. Bye.